up with your clip this to your jacket here. Not really sure. Yeah. I know you're practicing, but you oh. get a chance to like see him and talk with him a little bit. Oh yeah, I saw him. I really ain't talked to him for real, cause he was kind of like on the side. But like I talked to him before. I actually like hosted him when uh, he was a recruit coming to Bama, and so uh, yeah, we still we still pretty cool though. What advice would you give him, kind of coming here and, and joining Alabama? You just committed last night. Yeah, um, I would just say just be ready to come in and work, and uh, it's really a unique experience just to go against the best of the best each and every day. Back and, and maybe playing with him, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm really just trying to be where my feet are at right now and worry about these these last games we got. A lot of the uh, Michigan players they were talking about how hard of a hitter Caleb is. Just what what's the hardest hit you've seen him make, and just how hard of a hitter is he? Uh, hardest hit I've seen Caleb make. I don't know. I, I can't even count, to be honest. But yeah, he definitely had that mindset of uh, running through tackles, not two tackles. So yeah, he he got a couple of big hits. Who can hit in the secondary? Uh -huh. Who is the hardest hitter in the secondary? The hardest hitter in the secondary. Mm. I've had to. I, li I like to think of myself as the hardest hitter in the secondary. Um, it just it's just a unique experience. I think uh, with my teammates, we just get to watch film together uh, more, and I think that's that's really helping us a lot. Um, just watching film and talking through what we see with each other, how we are gonna play this type of look, and I think it's really good for us because that's also like team bonding as well. Uh, getting closer to your brothers, knowing what he thinks on the field when he sees certain stuff. A lot of Michigan players have been talking about having to stop Jalen How hard is it gonna be to stop Adrian McCarthy? Yeah, I think I think it's gonna be definitely a tough challenge. Probably one of the toughest challenges we have this year. And um, you know, his resume speaks for itself. He goes out there and performs great each and every week, and uh, puts his team in, in winning situations. Yeah, that is something I saw about him, like just by him coming in and um, he's always up there meeting when he first got here. Like each day he's up there with the coaches, uh, meeting each and every day, learning different positions, learning as much as he can, um, steady asking questions. But he also had uh, a lot of confidence in himself. Uh, he's very confident in what he does and he puts a lot of work in to be confident. Uh, but yeah, he I, I saw it as soon as he came in through the door. When did he stop feeling like a freshman? Uh, I would say that's kind of a hard question because I be having to remind myself that he is a freshman, like even uh, in the spring and stuff like that. But um, I would say probably after the spring, uh, once he got settled in for real, for real, and you know just been hanging around him, talking to him, him cracking jokes here and there and, and stuff like that. But yeah. You're a, couple, you're a few years old. Does he ever like just from a non-football standpoint mm -hmm. have a freshman moment? Does he? Act a little bit young sometimes, or is he okay. just a man of heart? I ain't gonna lie, like, so we was getting on the plane to come up here, and like, usually Kato, like, he be chilling, like, he might wear his little glasses or something, but uh, I get on the plane, and I'm walking back on the plane, Cug got his feet propped up, uh, he chilling, kicked back, and I had like a little digital camera or whatever, he's like, bro, take my picture, take my picture, take my picture, so uh, I get it, you know, this is a fun experience for him, him being in college for the first time, and experiencing the, uh, the uh, college football playoff. Mm -hmm. Yesterday's the first time facing the Sugar Bowl last year, but and we don't get to see a ton when we're there. Coach Shaven obviously works with the DBs and gets on y'all a little bit. What's it like having him work with y'all's group for best practice? Uh, having Coach work with us, man, it
uh, we know he's gonna he's gonna challenge us, and when he's getting onto us, we know that's just gonna bring out the best in us, and it's gonna uh, make us better each and every day. And just listen to what he say, not how he's saying it, but listen to what he's saying, uh, and take it and apply it to your game. Sort of similar to that with his background being a DB coach and everything. Mm -hmm. Is there any small intricacy, or even if it's technique or philosophy that he's instilled on you guys specifically, where you haven't really heard it anywhere else? Um, I would just say we preach we preach technique a lot, and um, but it shows up on the film. Like if we have a negative play. Uh, he could tell you why you had that negative play. You either drop stepping right here when you're coming out your break, or you're not staying square in your scooch. Your shoulders are turned. It's just little nuances that he gives out here and there that we take and uh, try to implement on the field. Does he spend a uh, kind of more of a substantial amount of time with you guys specifically? Uh, yeah, co coaches in our room watch a film probably most of the time, and so it's always great going in there with him. Uh, you know he's gonna have a lot to talk about, a lot to say, and uh, a lot to coach you up on. And he's never gonna let you, never gonna let you relax or, or be uh, complacent. And that's that's one of the things I love about coach. He's always gonna push us to the to the best. Even when we did our best, he's gonna push us even harder. Is that super stressful when he's in there watching tape with you guys, or is that more of like a fun type of experience? Uh, I would say I would say this year has been more of a fun type of experience, just because. Um, you know, a lot of people think Coach Saban not a funny guy or or, or a nice guy. He's just mean all the time. But uh, it's actually been fun, fun to be around, uh, cracking jokes here and there while we watching film, uh, get a few laughs here or there. And uh, but yeah, it's, it's just fun. Like I feel like the whole DB room. I guess you could say Coach Saban's a part of that too. It, it's close this year with uh, T. Rob and all of us, all the team bonding we've been doing. We just became very close and um, a, a tight knit group. Uh, like funny moment that you can recall from throughout the season? Um, I'm trying to think. One funny moment throughout the season. I don't, I don't know, but he, he, he had, he has his days. He got his days for sure. I think there was that clip from like SEC Inside where he like said something to Tyrion about like you want to see me three. Oh. How much of practice does he kind of get in there with y'all? Yeah. Um, uh, he does it quite a bit. Uh, usually we go up to him, uh, messing with him and stuff like that, and then he say some slick like that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's always a good time when he, when he does that. Kind of, kind of shows that he can he can still be fun, but still be be about business at the same time. Uh, you all the nerves? Yeah. Um, Kind of been taking it like a regular week. Uh, definitely been just trying to enjoy the time that we have down here, but also um, making sure I'm still studying, uh, studying the other team, and, and yeah, really, really just I'm really just cooling, not cooling, but uh, I, don't, I don't feel too nervous or nothing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I was coach, my game day fit. Um, that's a great question. If I was coach, my game day fit would probably be like a little some crimson with some with some hound's tooth in there. But I don't know if he he would want to mess with that. Like probably like a crimson jacket, hound's tooth pants, something like that. Just to just to show the uh, the culture. <laughs> JJ McCarthy on film. What have you guys seen? being able to study JJ over the last Yeah, he does a he does a great job of uh, controlling their offense uh, with motions and uh, timing up different snap counts, giving different looks, uh, checking to see what the defense is in and getting his team in the, in the best situation possible uh, to be successful. And uh, He's going to be a real tough talent this year, I mean, this, this game. And, you know, he does a great job of extending plays when he has to and, and, and getting the ball to his playmakers. About Roman Wilson, Cornelius Johnson, they both bring different things. To the yeah. Table. Have you guys done anything special to kind of prep for, for those different skill sets? Um, not nothing special, but it, they definitely been doing it. Like Roman, he does it definitely motions a lot um, throughout the game. I think they got a motion every every snap that I've, I've watched in the games. 
So that that's probably the challenge, most challenging thing, just knowing uh, what we're going to go to when they motion, knowing that they are going to motion and uh, just get it communicated across the board. Freshman Samaj Morgan, you guys, mm -hmm. you guys take note of him? Yeah, yeah. I've been watching Samaj. Um, he's a very good explosive player. I think he, he did punt returner now, right? Uh, here and there. Here and there? Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, he's, he's an explosive player and, and uh, hasn't been getting – wasn't getting that many looks early on in the season, but as the season kept going on, he's been getting more and more targets. When you face an offense that uses tight ends a lot like Michigan does, mm -hmm. are there any nuances to how you have to prepare for facing that? Um, I would say we just have to be uh, be more aware of where they are because, uh, like, like you said, they use their tight ends a lot. But I think playing Georgia kind of helped because they use their tight end a lot. And so it's kind of like have the same mindset of going from Georgia to Michigan uh, and their style of offense is both using their tight end uh, a lot. And it's just something that we got to be on the lookout for and uh, just communicate it and make sure we're executing the right call. As far as the rushing game goes, have you guys, obviously Michigan ran the ball 35 straight times against mm -hmm. Penn State. Is that something that you guys have been prepping more for, even in the, the secondary, being able to come down and make those plays? Yeah. Um, we know we know that's one of their strengths. Uh, they love to run the ball, like you said. They run the ball. They ain't even passed the ball in the second half against Penn State, and that's something that that they want to do. And, it, and it's proven that that they can go out there and do it. So that's definitely been an emphasis uh, this week, this week in practice. And yeah, we just try to take everything with the same same mindset, same uh, same mentality. Cause every team wants to run the ball. Cause you run the ball well, you're going to win the game. And so. That's been our thing, uh, making sure we're wrapping up and thudding good in practice. Uh, what's it been like working with Coach Steele this year? Obviously, you had coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, being with Coach Steele this year, it, it's, it's been great. Uh, he, he's a guy that's, like I said, he's always going he's always gonna to stay on us. He's never going to let us. Uh, be below the standard. He's always gonna hold us to that, to that Bama standard. And I think I think that's one thing I love the most. Uh, him just coming in and uh, bringing the Bama standard back. Uh, just making sure everybody know how important it is to do stuff the way that we do stuff, and and, and it, that it works. And we just all have to trust the process. And nothing in life is gonna be easy. He always tells us that, and he does a great job of getting us prepared for the games and uh, putting us in su successful situations in the game. Yeah, um, probably when we early in camp, when we wasn't like having our, our best days, so to say, or uh, too many people had low, so we wouldn't get enough turnovers. Um, he would just steady harp on that. He still harps on that to this day uh, with the turnovers and stuff like that. But um, his just his level of energy that he brings to to the meeting room, to the on game days, it's just to practice. It's just um, it's just, it's just great to have that coach that's always gonna push you to your limits and um, and, and want the best for you. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely, it definitely can be tough on the player when you when you go through injuries and stuff like that. Cause we, you know, we love to play the game uh, of football, and when that's taken away from you, it's kind of it's kind of hard sometimes. But I just think in times like that, you just need to be around your teammates as much as possible. And, uh, Try to keep a positive mindset, but it's also gonna gonna make you stronger when you have to uh, deal with deal with certain adversity, and that, that's the way I kind of looked at it as um, just some adversity I had to go through, and uh, was meant to me was meant to be is gonna is gonna be, and just try to just try to take it positive and, and keep pushing forward. What are your teammates, Justin Boydby, you know, dealt with his own mm -hmm. process as well? How was it been like to see him uh, you know, work his way back, yeah. have a great season? And have a great season? Yeah, um, I'm just I'm just so proud of Justin, man. Like you said, um, uh, we definitely missed him on the field last year. I'm just glad that um, he's back healthy and, and, and being able to play this game that he, that he loved. Yesterday we heard from a couple of your guys on uh, on the offensive side mm -hmm. of the ball that you moved away from the tablets and gone to more group film study. Yeah. Amid the sign stealing stuff today, we heard from the Michigan players that they did the same thing mm -hmm. in November. Do you think that that's kind of become a general concern in college football? Um, I would say 
I would say yes, kinda. If you if you if you make it that way, but um, at the end of the day, like it's all about execution on the field. Um, you can know what this team's gonna run, but you still have to stop it at the end of the day. So yeah, it really all comes back down to the same thing it would take that if, if that wasn't going on. But uh, yeah, it, it's just different, and I, I think I think the team is handling handling it well. How big are games like this? Uh, last year, Brian Ranch had a career game in a bowl game, and mm -hmm. look where he is now for you know an early draft pick. Right. What is your message to some of the guys that you have a big game like this, you can really put the next level? And Coach Saban talks about that, that he wants to elevate your guys' value. Yeah. Um, well, you know, when you play against good competition and on a, on a big stage like this, it's always going to bring bring a lot of eyes. And uh, we all we all want to play our best, uh, not only for ourselves, but for the team. And with team success come individual success. And it's, it's just a great opportunity to go out there and have fun and, and, and play with your brothers. I don't think anybody needs to go out there and try to do something they haven't been doing all year because what we've been doing has been working. But uh, yeah, it's definitely an opportunity for us to go out there and create, create value for ourselves. And, uh, we look forward to doing that. Malachi, you've been with Coach Saban for a few years now. Have you noticed any changes in you know how he treats the team and how he's related to you guys this year compared to previous years? I feel like Coach, uh, I feel like I want to say more lenient. I would say he's more um, kind of like open. Uh, he's more open to us. He talks to us a lot. Um, like I said, with the jokes and stuff, I think this the this the year he's made the most jokes I've ever heard him make before. And um, yeah, it's just good to see that uh, we we brought that side out of him. I kind of credit that to us a little bit because some people are, like kind of scared to like talk to coach and make jokes at coach or with coach. But uh, with us and like in our position group, um, we talk to coach like he T Rob or or anybody else. We just joke around, joke around with him and. Um, let him let him show that side out because he 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 like when we joke around with him and uh, and talk to him and stuff like that. But uh, I, I would say that's the biggest thing I've seen him change. Any jokes stand out that you remember that you can share? Uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> what about his dance moves? Can you tell us a little bit about those? Oh yeah, he he got a little dance move. He got the little sideways, sideways, sideways. That, I think that's his favorite one. Cause every time he hit a dance, that's the that's the one he he go directly to. So. I think that's his favorite one. Every time, it's been multiple times. Uh, I think he did it. He did it my freshman year, and then he did it. Like when he won the title. Uh, yeah, and then he did it. I'm trying to think. He was either. I think it was either SEC. He probably was SEC or um, what you call it. But whenever we just start, like whenever we have a big win or something, and then we, uh, he coach walk in. And we just start hooping, hollering, and jumping around him. That's when he usually does it. He just don't come out and do it on his own. We kind of like pressure him into into celebrating a little bit. Uh, you've known Coach for a while, and every year there's questions about is this it, is this it. But then you just got a big you know commitment yesterday yeah. uh, from USC a transfer. What what does that say about he's not done, he's not slowing down, and what's the message to the future of Alabama? Um, I, I think it's in good hands. I have no idea when when Coach will stop coaching, but. Uh, I think I think he's still he's still in it for the long haul, and it shows like by the way he comes to meetings and stuff like that. He still takes on the day uh, just the same as he would have when he first started, and um, I think that's the greatest thing about coming here. Like just seeing coaches' consistency, like each and every day, he's sticking to the same um, schedule, same routine um, that he has been for for a very long time, and uh, that's why that's why he's a great coach because uh, he's staying consistent. Jalen Miller's been a big part of the season, obviously. Uh, do you have a favorite Jalen Miller story that you can share either on the field or um, I would say, I don't know, I just, like, me and Miro, we always, like, from the first game, uh, after warm-ups or something like that, after we get done, like, I always go dap him up and tell him, like, go be you, uh, play your game, we behind you, we love you, brother. Like, every time, that's, that's one of the things I look forward to the most, like, um, with Jalen, and then just just seeing him perform um, out there each and every Saturday, man, it's just it just been it's been very been very fun to watch, and just seeing him grow as not only a player but as a person and a leader on his team, uh, it, it's been phenomenal to watch.
commentary on giving the whole team the Lynx shirt. So yeah. talk about that moment and how Lynx was in the y'all embodied the shirt. Yeah, it was very... It was very uh, uh, thoughtful of them, I would say, and it was around the holiday season too. And uh, this says a lot about their character. You know, they they want to allow their teammates to to make profit off uh, their link and the name, image, and likeness. And I think that's a uh, that's a good thing. That's a big thing. Uh, it shows that they're that they're not selfish with what's what's coming in for them or whatever. But uh, it it really wasn't nothing like um, like. Um, too much about the bread or whatever, but it, it's just nice to know that we can get paid for that now. So yeah, we definitely appreciate them. Right, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. And then we're going to the other room. All right. Follow me.